struggle is real, and the struggle is like authenticity versus phothicity. I can't even say the word. I thought I created the word. Like, wow, a cool new word. Like, faux is like fake phothicity, but I looked it up. It's already on the Urban Dictionary. But looking at like, there's like the humble truth, you're being authentic, or there's like everything goes through a, a filter, and that filter can lead to like just being a hypocrite. When we read the word hypocrite in the Bible, that means like he's a play actor, one that, that puts on a face. And like, well, who wouldn't want to be a puppy face? I mean, puppies are cute. Everyone looks, pu- you know. But what if we're like, okay, get rid of, cool. Always look forward to them. Am I going to hit anybody today? No, there's like filters in life, and we filter everything, or we'll, we'll, we'll look at what we're about to text or what we're about to, to tag in a social media post, and we'll, we'll change it. And I'll go back like hours later going, oh, I don't like the way I said that. Here's a better way to word it, and I'll change the captioning or whatever because we just want everything to just be just perfectly right just so we can look at our best. And so Instagram got immediately popular because it has all of these like filters, and you can filter your, your face through these things, and they look better. And, you know, back in my day... <laughs> That sounds old, right? But remember, like, getting ready for yearbook photos? You got one shot, right? If you don't get this, or your ID photo, or your driver's license photo, your passport photo, like, man, you really want this thing to look good, and some of you guys are just photogenic to every time, but more often than not, you get that one shot, and you mess it up. You get this kind of weird-looking face in your photo for a long, long time. But I remember my senior year photos, there was like this incredible new technology where I was, I was breaking out acne real bad my senior year, but they could take the pimples away. And so that senior photo looks stunning. Like, ooh, can you please just walk around and filter me all the time so I can look stunning all the time because we want to look at our best. I think one of the greatest compliments that we can give to each other is when we say, I mean, just what you see is what you get. Like, when I see you, I feel like I know you. feel like you're not hiding anything. You're not trying to filter anything. Because that struggle is real. The struggle to try to filter everything through. Well, let's just take Instagram again. And I want to, I created a new game for us today just to kind of set the, set the tone here. This brand new game is called Instagram Filter or Star Wars Reference. So the names of the Instagram filter or names of Star Wars references. You remember once upon a time I said I was only going to make three Star Wars references a year and I just completely gave up on that because it was pointless? So, you ready for the game? Or is it just me? Okay. First one, X-Pro2. Is that an Instagram filter or Star Wars? Got a little, yeah, okay, so some of you guys, do you, do, who has Instagram open right now and you're cheating? It's okay. I didn't call, I didn't call rules. Yeah, X-Pro2, that's an Instagram. This one's easy. X-Wing. Duh. Okay, they're going to get harder. Moon. Who said both? Yeah, moon is a Star Wars reference, obviously, because there's, you know, it's not a moon, it's a death. Okay. Um, (laughs) If I start you quoting Star Wars, we might never get back, because we'll just keep quoting through the whole movie. Okay, Gingham. There you go. That is Instagram filter. Ray. All right. Reyes. How about we'll go both? Because Cormoran Ray is a Twilight male Jedi master, which I only know because I looked it up on Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is a, is a source for all things. Uh, crema, crema. The folks at Instagram love their coffee breaks. That inspired the name for this one, so that is Instagram. Perpetua. That'd be Instagram. Lobaka. He is related to Chewbacca. Clarendox. Tricky, I may have got you here. Clarendox, again, according to Wikipedia, the Clarendox was a top scale restaurant on Coruscant. Clarendon is an Instagram filter. Oh, tricky, tricky. All right, whitewashed tombs. Open your Bibles to Matthew. Thank you, Paul, got it. Yes, Matthew chapter 23, that's where we're going today. Matthew chapter 23, we got Jesus and some, some strong words to the hypocrites. Matthew chapter 23, look in in verse 27. It starts off with a woe. Woe to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees. You hypocrites! I love quoting this part of the Bible because I just love to say hypocrites really loud because there's always an exclamation point at the end of it. You hypocrites! 
You're like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So this is where we go today. And I really think we've got like three things we can point out in the, the sin of hypocrisy. Three points. Number one, the hypocritical sin, it is dangerous. Number two, hypocritical sin is detectable. And number three, hypocritical sin is and can be <laughs> dismissible. So let's see how uh, those points play out. First, to set the stage, I want us to think about the greatest villain of all time. You've watched your movies. Which one do you think? Is it, is it Voldemort? Is it the alien? Is it the Joker? Darth Vader? Hannibal Lecter? I mean, so many options to choose from. Who is the greatest villain of all time? And we can have this conversation after church and around lunch tables, but I believe the greatest villain of all time, you can debate me on this and you can be wrong, Eddie Haskell. Now, some of you saw this live. I watched the reruns. Eddie Haskell would be from what old TV sitcom? Leave it to Beaver. Yeah, so leave it to Beaver. Eddie Haskell was like Wally's friend, and he'd come over, and he was such an insincere sycophant. Yes, I looked that word up, and maybe I only used it to try to impress my wife, who likes bigly words. Um, Eddie Haskell is an insincere sycophant. Was a sycophant someone that tries to, you know, leverage compliments for his own, you know, getting higher up? I'm going to try to use you to build me up. I'm going to sweet talk you, not because I think you're sweet, because I think you're a sucker and you'll buy it. And even as a kid, I was like, ooh, Eddie Haskell would come on the screen and I would just get like sick to my stomach going, he's just this like filtered flatterer. Everything he, like he's one way to Ward and, and June, was that Beaver's parents? And he's another way, you know, whenever. And if anything ever goes wrong or they get in trouble, he blames the other person going, that guy scares me because it's almost a lose-lose situation to be around that person. It's always going to spin it back to you where you end up looking bad and he ends up coming out smelling ro like roses. Like, give me a villain like the Joker that you just know he's a villain. What you see is what you get. But the hypocrite.